and get things going. Uh, I'm going to start with our virtual meeting public um, statement. Uh, I'm calling the meeting to order. Good afternoon, everyone. All members of the Public Assembly Facilities Commission are participating virtually. For virtual meetings, commission members will be muted until asked to be heard. At that time, they will be recognized and will be unmuted. When there is a vote, it will be necessary to take a roll call vote and commission member will be recognized and will raise their hand um, and state their vote. Today's meeting is a public meeting. Citizens can listen to the meeting if they contacted the city manager's office to make the necessary arrangements. The meeting will also be live streamed on the city's YouTube channel. The recording of today's meeting will be available on Friday, June 24th, 2022 on the city's website. Um, can we start with a roll call, please? Yes. Uh, Haley Jingles. Here. Otis Northington. <laughs> Billy Rich. Here. Manya Stewart. Here. Kathleen Garber. Here. Vicki Miller. Here. Ray Bowden. Here. Bill O. Here. Bill's here and Ray's here. <laughs> Priscilla Green. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. uh, we will start with an approval of the minutes from the May 16th meeting. Um, could I get a motion from the commission, please? Move for Second. approval. Second. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any question? All right, we will take this vote by roll call, please. Haley? Yes. Otis, Billy, yes, Manya, yes, Kathleen, yes, Vicki, Ray Bowden, yes, Bill Oaks, yes, and Priscilla Green, yes. All right, thank you all. Uh, we will start with the resolution resolution recommending approval of a contract agreement with the Carolina Thunderbirds. Robert, would that be you? You're on mute. Sorry. Uh, Carrie, are you able to pull up that action item? I believe so. And I need to, you're gonna be okay just for a second, Robert. I need to step away just for a minute here. Yeah, that's fine. So commission in front of you all, you'll see shortly, uh, and it's also sent via email, an action request form for approval of food and beverage concession services uh, at the Winston Fairgrounds uh, and associated uh, recreation and parks facilities. Um, the Thunderbirds have been uh, our, our food and beverage operator at city facilities, except for Bowman Gray since 2016. And um, You've all kind of been through the uh, addendums and the changes through that process and seen some of that information. So uh, they're very, we're very familiar with them and as they are with us. And um, uh, we put it out the bid and we received three return bids. One was Innovation Hospitality, who also does Bowman Gray. Uh, the second one was Carolina Thunderbirds. And then the third one was... Um, I believe, Carrie, can you scroll down a little bit? I think it's sweeter than honey. There you go, sweeter than honey. Uh, so after review of those um, proposals by uh, a team of five staff members from various departments, uh, including the MWBE office with Shakira Westbrook, um, the uh, unanimous point scoring leader was the Carolina Thunderbirds. A uh, big part of that was their percentage, which was higher than uh, both parties at 30%. Uh, they also committed to a 5% additional uh, percentage in concession stand upgrades each year. So essentially 5% of whatever they sell, they'll put into upgrading facilities at uh, recreation centers or the fairgrounds. And then Thirdly, they've committed to uh, also help entertainment within the facility. So $20,000 commitment per year, um, which obviously uh, booking concerts and, and larger events helps them in selling concessions. So I think there's a, 
uh, a good thought process behind that. So ultimately that's what drove them there. Um, Sweeter Than Honey was out of Charlotte and then uh, both Carolina Thunderbirds and Innovation Hospitality were local vendors. Um, none of them are MWBE certified. Uh, so that kind of washed there. So in the end, uh, Carolina Thunderbirds ended up with the highest uh, points and that was turned in and now it's presented to you all for approval. Uh, upon approval, it will go to city council in the August meetings. And in between that time frame, we will uh, extend the current Thunderbirds food and beverage contract for month to month until um, all parties agree and the contract is finalized. So I'll take any questions on it. Uh, Bob, I'm just, this is Vicki. I'm just uh, coming into the meeting. Um, I had a question about the reven uh, revenue sharing part. Um, yep. Could you explain that for me? Because this is new for me. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I, to keep it simple, uh, as part of the bid process, each bidder was um, required to bid, uh, submit what their percentage back to the city would be, uh, which is a fairly normal process for venues and arenas mm -hmm. across the country. Uh, so if we had an event one weekend and we sold $100 worth of concessions uh, after tax, the Thunderbirds, in this case, at 30%, would owe us $30. So they would pay the city $30 for the right to sell concessions at our venues. And then on top of that, in this circumstance, they would um, add another $5, which will go into a, a pot of investment funds towards concessions uh, throughout the year. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay, sure, sure. That that makes sense very simply, yes. Yeah, and over the years, just to put in comparison, uh, just going back to 2014, since we kind of merged away from the Coliseum, we've seen percentages as low as 25% to as high as 35%. Um, and uh, so 30% is, is fairly normal and right in the middle there. Uh, also, the uh, innovation hospitality folks, I believe they had a scaled, a scaled um, percentage, which I believe started at 20 or 25 percent and rose up to 35 percent. But if you look at our historical numbers, we would never, you know, barring something astronomical, we would never hit that 35 percent number. So. Anything else? Um, I think this is it. I want to ask one question again, since I was late coming in. The um, the resolution approving the entertainment and attraction agreements, that is the piece that we're talking about now? No, uh, that's, not, that'll okay. be after this okay. one. Right now uh, we're talking this. about the concessions, yeah. Just the concession, the that's fine. That's fine. That's All right, I I have questions about that, and I'll hold it until then. Okay, I'm gr I'm good. Anything else? Is um. Do you need a uh? Do you need someone to uh, to put this forward for approval? Yeah, I was just gonna see if Haley was back in. If Haley's not back in, if someone could uh motion that to move it to city council and then uh, second it and then Carrie will do uh, a vote. Uh, I'll move it to move it to, to city council. I want to ask Matthew. Okay, let's uh, go down the list. Haley, I don't think she's back, like I said. Um, Billy Rich. Yes. Monia Stewart. Did she drop off? Monia? You're muted if you're there. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Kathleen? Approved. Vicki Miller? Yes. Ray Bowden? Yes. Bill Oaks? Yes, I think Otis joined as well, just so you know, Carrie. Thank you. I did, yes. <laughs> Priscilla. Yeah. And um, Otis, did you want to vote on the resolution? 
Um, I, I was able to hear yes, and I okay. reviewed the doc. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, Haley's still not back. We will move to the next item, which uh, is the resolution to approve Fair Entertainment Act. Uh, I think Carrie will show the, share the screen, and we'll kick this one to Cheryl Hartley, yeah. Fair Director. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you can see, um, this is the resolution to approve the attraction agreements for the 2022 Carolina Classic Fair. Um, Agra Cadabra, Agra, our ma magic show, and Brad's comedy hypnotist show. That one is at $18,000. They'll be returning this year. Mountain Mike Whetstone Woodwork, he's our chainsaw carver out in the village. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he's $5,000. He will also be returning. And then our pig racing, which will be $12,000. Um, these are acts that we've had in the past, um, the pig racing um, will be a different vendor. But other than that, um, these are some great acts and we look forward to having them back this year. Does anyone have any questions on these? Okay, Cheryl, just to clarify, are these, sorry, are I'm these sorry. one year contracts? Yes, they're all one year contracts. Thank you. Okay, Cheryl, um, I had uh, the first question I had, the fair, it covers, it covers this region. You have persons attending this um, fair yearly, annually. Uh, how wide a region does this cover? Does it cover like these, um, the counties like Forsyth, Stokes, Surrey, Yakin, does it go into Virginia? You see what yes. I'm saying? What area? Okay. Yes, um, yes. I'm um, a lot of okay. people, if mm -hmm. if you're referring to our entertainment, um, that's a wide range. I mean, uh, like the magic show, Brad's comedy hypnotist, he's out of Virginia. Um, mm -hmm. Mountain Mike, he's right here in Maggie Valley. Well, what I'm talking about is not where the entertainment is from. I'm okay. talking about the person's have we surveyed where the people come from that come to the fair? And I'm thinking uh, yes. in those those uh, counties that I mentioned, even Virginia, of course. Um, could you tell me about that? Um, yes, we were, we do have a survey that was done back in 2017 or 18. I'll have to look that up. We can get you a copy of that. But it reached out. It reaches out from pretty much the whole middle part of the North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina. Um, you can actually, there's a lot of people coming from and entering our contests from all over North Carolina. Well, okay. I'll, I'll make sure you get that survey because it's broken down in quite a few different segments on okay. who's coming from where and different, even entertainment exhibits. It covers a wide variety. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that too. We get, I mean, obviously Ticketmaster data. So we, we pull where folks purchase tickets at uh, from all, all over. So it, it's mainly the Western part of the state and up into North, uh, Southern Virginia. Okay. Now what I'm actually getting at when I'm asking this is um, diversity wise, I'm thinking that we need to look at those statistics again um the people themselves um what races ethnic groups they represent and i'm looking at the entertainment if we need to look at uh including entertainment other than i mean in addition to what you have here if we possibly could include some other types of music groups or whatever you know, we just need to look at that survey uh, to be representative, you know, of that. And that might bring uh, more persons to the fair. And talking about the survey, I know you have this survey, but I'm thinking too, in this day and time, I think 2017, I don't know if TikTok was out then, but Facebook was, 
marketing wise, we could use Facebook, TikTok, whatever uh, mechanism we need to use to reach people just to get their views on the type of entertainment, you know, they might like to see. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, and we'll definitely look at getting another survey. Um, like I said before, we do have that other document, and it um, does mm-hmm. have quite a few different um, levels to it. And I agree, we are reaching out, trying to be as diverse in all areas with fair mm-hmm. entertainment. And, and yeah. as Bob said, the ticket master, you know, that mechanism mm-hmm. definitely is helpful too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, if I can piggyback too, I, I, um, this is not all of our acts, Vicky. I don't know if that yeah. is what's coming across. No, no, this no. Is merely a portion, uh, and y'all have already approved some acts, um, and w- mm-hmm. we do. We we try to be very intentional about diversifying the acts, and we have been for quite a few years. Uh, you know, the uh, grandstand represents. You know, QMG night is always a Monday. We have a country night on Tuesday. Um, and a Christian night on Wednesday. And, you know, we've been highlighting our clock tower with uh, Hispanic Heritage Nights and um, lots some of other local. diverse. Yes. Yeah, lots of local entertainment. And then I think I think you all have already approved. Cheryl, did, did, did we already push through the, ac- the, the Acrobat one? or Yes, Tanzanites. So, that was back in um, yeah. March. Can you share a little bit about who they are, what they are? Um, we have a Tanzanite African Acrobat Act that's going to be located on the grounds. Um, it's acrobats, chair stacking, um, the different types of music. And um, that is just one of the acts that we found actually out in um, San Antonio when we went back in November. We've mm, got those. Okay. Um, the Grandstand Acts. Robert, can you, I don't have access to my document right here where I'm at. Um, yeah, uh, so so Monday night is um, yes. going to be CNC Music Factory and Rob Bass. Uh, and we work with uh, QMG Radio Station to uh, help select those artists. Tuesday night, we, we think we have some artists selected with uh, 931 The Wolf, but we are just waiting finalization on that. Uh, so nothing is final at the moment or firm. And then Wednesday night will be Ren Collective, which uh, I believe we approved. That was probably one of the first ones we approved way back, uh, probably even in 2021. So um, that'll represent kind of the entertainment aspect of the grandstand. Do you have any more questions? All right, if there are no questions, I believe we need a vote on this resolution. Um, Commission members, could I have a motion to approve this resolution? Motion to approve. I second. Thank you, a motion has been made and seconded. Uh, Is there any question? All in favor, let it be known, let your vote be known by roll call, please. Haley Jingles. Yes. Otis. Yes. Billy Rich. Yes. Manya. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Ray. Yes. Bill. Yes. And Priscilla. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Robert, do I need to go back and do the resolution for the Thunderbirds contract? Uh, no, we went through and did that. Uh, Mr. Okay. Oates took care of it. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, We'll move on to the Fairgrounds Capital Budget Overview. Do we have Mr. Rao here or anyone from budget? Hey, Robert. I'm here. I can can speak to that if you need me to. Yeah, Mike, if you, uh, I'll introduce Mike Foyvisto. He'll kind of highlight this. I think Ben sent a correlating document earlier today. Carrie can pull up. Mike, do you have that document that Ben sent? I do not, but I can probably speak to the improvements. And if anybody has any questions, can help fill in some gaps if you need me to. Okay. And for my clarity, just to confirm, this is not an item for approval, right? This is kind of a 
Correct. Uh, informational okay. item. Okay. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, Commission members. Uh, I'm Mike Coivisto, the Capital Budget Manager for the City of Winston-Salem. Uh, the City Council will be considering considering the operating and capital budgets for fiscal year 22-23 uh, at its meeting tonight. We wanted to share a brief update with you all on the public assembly related projects that are currently included in the capital budget for next year. Um, oh, there's a presentation. Okay, well. Um, Sorry. That's good. So um, you could maybe go to the next slide. <laughs> That'd be good. Let's see what we got here. So the we're anticipating having uh, limited obligation bonds issued to cover uh, improvements at Truist uh, Stadium. And that's uh, to address the uh, Major League Baseball's, um, the contraction of the minor league uh, system and the remaining teams must comply with the uh, new facility standards to maintain their professional development license. Uh, and this project would provide for the required improvements to bring Truist Stadium uh, into compliance with MLB's new standards. Uh, there are uh, an additional $4.5 million for uh, renovations at the fairgrounds. That includes $3.5 million uh, in limited obligation bonds to address. Uh, basically some of the issues that came up as part of the master planning, the, the fairgrounds master plan, along with um, some specific projects to address interior improvements at the annex, uh, roof replacements uh, on the fairgrounds, and also repairs at Yesterday Village. Uh, the Benton, that's the standard $250,000 that uh, is allocated out for uh, capital renovations there, uh, work for uh, FY22-23, includes uh, painting of the Benton North pre-function area and replacement of uh, banquet food carts and other maintenance related repairs. And then also there is $250,000 allocated for Bowman Gray Stadium, uh, which would replace the roof, um, and provide waterproofing and repair the balcony pavers at the press uh, box building and replace two large HVAC units in the field house building. Uh, so as you can see there, um, got a little more than $10 million allocated for FY23 uh, on the expenditure side. Um, majority of that is funded by limited obligation bonds. Uh, with fairgrounds reserves paying for those three specific projects that were noted. And then also uh, North Carolina Municipal Leasing funding the repairs at the Benton. So uh, a little more information on the Truist Stadium project. Um, it is required to, requi to uh, comply with Major League Baseball standards, would include visitor clubhouse improvements, Wi-Fi upgrades, enclosed batting facilities, Field improvements, uh, out, uh, an outfield rest, outfield restroom, which is not part of the MLB requirements, and then an, an administrative office, uh, out, which is not included in the MLB requirements. Uh, and my understanding is that we're still working through that with uh, with the team management. Uh, fairgrounds. Um, that $3.5 million is, uh, is anticipated to fund some electrical improvements for $2 million. The annex dehumidifier phase two at $1.2 million, and then the other green project down there, other deferred maintenance needs. Is the, um, uh, we'll use that $300,000 to address those. The other three specific projects are there in the blue, the annex interior improvements, fairgrounds roof replacements, and the yesterday village repairs. And you can see the funding sources there uh, for how we're paying for those projects. Uh, as for the Benton, the $250,000 there, as I mentioned, will address the uh, Benton North pre-function um, area with painting. Um, eight banquet food carts, there's a contingency there for $35,000. Some other miscellaneous projects there totaling up to $250,000 which is funded by North Carolina Municipal Leasing Corporation revenues. And Bowman Gray Stadium, there's the field house HVAC replacement for 150,000, the West press box roof replacement for 100,000 for a total of 250,000 um, there. And that's the last slide. 
So that's all I have. Are there any questions related to that? Yes, uh, Mike, this is Bill Oaks. I have a handful of questions. Okay. So first off, um, at the last commission meeting, Kathleen uh, broached the issues related to the grandstand and the insurance and the ability to make sure that that venue is usable for the fair and for other events. Um, I see nothing in the capital budget or uh, information here that would seem like that's going to help that because it seems like it's a multi-million dollar problem that um, is potentially a safety issue as I understand it. So I, I'm kind of curious why there's nothing in there related to that. Understood, Mr. Oaks. I, Robert, do you, you want to address that? Yeah, the, the best I can tell you is we're, we're going to proceed um, using existing fund balance and um, ultimately then pull pull work with the insurance company to supplement hopefully all of it or, or most of it once that finally comes. So, I mean, Cheryl's on here and we've been working on yeah. uh, working through those replacements. And, you know, any day now we should see the seating assessment. If the seating structural assessment comes back clear, you know, our, our, our biggest issues are the actual roof itself and um, the individual actual projects in the grandstand, right? The electrical so, things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we're still waiting, but I think there, um, Mike, uh, maybe I've heard there's ARPA funds that might be possible to be used. Um, I, I think we're really relying on a lot of the insurance and then kind of existing, you know, fairgrounds fund to, to take care of that, but not. Is there any concern it. about use of the grandstand for this year's fair? I mean, so there's probably concern, but I think Cheryl, I know Cheryl's committed. And I think I'm committed. We're committed to utilizing the grandstand. You know, option A is if we don't have seats to use or a roof, you know, we're going to roll some truck bleachers in there and limit the capacity to whatever that is, a thousand or fifteen hundred people. And they're going to sit on those truck bleachers and watch the shows on the dirt. You know, the dirt is fine. We have the dirt there. If we need to rent yeah. portable yeah. lights, we rent portable lights. You know, option B, yeah, yeah. That. Option B is we have functional seating area, and it's just an open air facility with no roof. Um, so what we do know is we're going to take off the roof, and property maintenance is working on kind of peeling all that structure out, leaving the actual steel steel framing of it because that's still in good shape but just removing all the pardon my uh, construction knowledge of fascia and like the yeah the underlayments and all those kind of drywall type of things that just need to go because as you know on a windy day there's still things flying off the roof so um you know best case scenario we have a good seating option for the fair and an open air roof with just some steel beams that that's you know, you can see the clouds on, you know, if it rains, the weather already affects the fair, whether it rains, you know, anytime it rains. So it's going to be affected in the grandstand, regardless of if it rained or if it didn't. So the show will go on. The show will go on. Okay. My, my other question is related to Truist Stadium and the improvements for uh, the Winston-Salem Dash and the, and, uh, Here's my concern, and uh, to be fully transparent with the commission, I do work with an outside agency that has worked with uh, people that have tried to use Truist Stadium. So to be completely transparent with folks on the on the commission, but it, the city has given uh, rental cuts to Truist Stadium uh, and to to the Winston Dash, and is again providing additional upgrades. Um, but the Dash are not really great community members in the respect of using of allowing non uh non folks non school system or city related folks to use the the venue in, in what i would call a reasonable cost structure um you know where you want to rent the venue but you are a for-profit business but you are community members and um or you're a non-profit business and and you are community members so i just i know that the city has limited ability to do that i was hoping that the city when this number when this conversation came up would at least uh, would at least have a 
conversation with the Dash about finding ways to bring more events at a reasonable cost structure to help benefit the city. Like, like Woodbat Bay, I work with the, the Disco Turkeys baseball and their what the Dash want to charge for rental fees is way out of uh, over what other communities charge that are in the area. I guess I, I have a question to add on to that, but then uh, this is Otis. Um, the, the two items that are outside the major league requirements. So, so as we expand on this, because yeah, I've, I've heard those, those items too, um, Bill, Bill mentioned, but um, as we go through, it looks like we are doing some things beyond what major league baseball is requiring uh, and which I guess we sort of have the gun to our head on the major league baseball requirements, but if we, we are doing things that are beyond that scope, then, you know, what, what, what can the city negotiate back or, or get some type of agreement on regarding usage of the stadium uh, really for the community benefit. Thanks. Yeah. I would just like to echo that as well. And Bill, thank you for circling back to the grandstand project as well, knowing that is a very large piece of, structure that needs to be repaired but with Truist Stadium I know it's kind of always been this weird sort of tenuous relationship between the city owns the facility and built the facility but it sort of belongs to the dash and so they're setting the rental structure whereas I know like as the commission we have voted and approved on even um you know, the renovated railroad station that was redone as a venue, like we approved the rental rates for that as the city for the city to establish. And so it's interesting to me that the dash sort of get to establish their own rental rates for the city. We're making five, a $5 million improvement. And to Otis's point, seem to be going above and beyond what is needed. And um, you mentioned it, that we're still in negotiation with the Dash, but I would certainly hope that they are contributing some money towards the construction of their office space and an additional outfield bathroom that primarily will only benefit them as an organization and not necessarily community rentals and facilities. Haley, I'm not sure what, I mean, because this is just a presentation, it's not coming, but. I I mean, I'm not sure what we can do as a commission to express this information, this, these concerns that are raised by multiple members of the commission to the city council or to uh, city leadership, but I think it would be appropriate, especially since it's based on a vote for today. Yes, did Ben join? I can't see if he came. No, in. no, he hasn't joined. I'm just trying to think going back um, to similar items um, of frustration. I think you all as a commission can can almost issue a, I don't know the right wording, a concern yeah, or, or right. something up to up to council saying, hey, you know, well, here's, I, a, here's a motion yes. we have as a group that we want to be considered in this process. Yeah, and I think that's what we'll, we can do, Bill, is that I will take that to Ben. And then because I also agree with you with the comments from you and, and, and um, Otis and Kathleen. Um, and other commission members, please feel free to weigh in as well, because I want this to be if we if we take this to Ben and to council that it's it's from um, our group um, that we all agree on these concepts and these points. But I will I will get that up the chain so that we that it's represented that we've made these comments. Yeah. OK, thank you. I appreciate that, Haley. I think that I mean, my only concern is the timing that's going on because it, today is the issue. Let's, uh, Robert, can we circle it with Ben um, after this on a call maybe and just see what we can do for tonight? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, and he may join by the end of this. He, he said okay. he was going to jump on. So if we want to go to the next few items and then um, if he, he's not on, yeah, we can do a call later with him. Okay. And commissioners, is there anyone that is in opposition of what we're talking about? We just, I, I do want to make this sure this is reflective of what the group wants to do. Well, this is Vicki. I do agree. I do agree. 
I would uh, just um, maybe there's some maybe you guys could do uh, some kind of vote and maybe not a voter some kind of we want to pass this on or have further discussion with city leaders regarding that and someone kind of seconded as a so motion. I'll, what I will move as that the commission empower Haley as our chairperson to express the commission's point of view as it relates to the dashes you dashes rental of the facility to community partners and our concern that their prices are uh more than what uh other cities charge this is vicky i second Commission members, a motion has been made and seconded. Is there any question? All in favor, let it be known by a roll call vote, please. Haley. Yes. Um, Otis. Yes. Um, sorry. <laughs> Billy Rich. Yes. Manya. You're muted, honey. Mine yes. Is. Okay, thank yes. you. <laughs> Kathleen? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Ray? Yes. Bill Oaks? I'm going to abstain. Okay. And Priscilla? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Commission members, and thank you, Bill. Um, we will move on to, and thank you, Mike, for that presentation also. We will move on to um, the Benton Marketing Development Plan for 22-23. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I've asked Tim uh, Cahill, our Director of Sales and Marketing, to uh, go over our, our uh, marketing plan for the upcoming year. During the budget presentation, you know, I did say that we have a new new plan out there and um, I'd like to present you with Tim Cahill to go over the, the plan. Carrie, if we could get the slides up, please. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, commission members. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. Um, as soon as we, um, as soon as we see the slides, uh, I can walk you through. Um, if we go to the next. Uh, we presented a, a pair of budgets, uh, uh, the latter of which was accepted at uh, approximately 4.107 million for fiscal year 22-23. Um, and in conjunction with that submission, we shared that we felt that there were uh, some actionable items that we needed to underwrite in order to build awareness uh, and kind of restabilize the sales organization um, as it had eroded since, uh, you know, based on the impact of COVID. Um, so we present the the, the four point one zero seven million was uh, was accepted, and I'm just going to give you some highlights of where we're trying to go. Uh, we we operate in an inordinately competitive um, market, uh, and one of the things that uh, my experience of more than three decades in this business has been that we need to make sure that our visibility and access to purchasing customers, decision-making customers is as high as it can be. Cvent is a portal um, that is free to meeting planners. We as uh, business unit uh, owners um, or managers uh, pay a fee to have a certain level of listing on Cvent. Uh, what Cvent allows customers to do, whether they be association customers, leisure customers, corporate customers, it allows them to um, source, search for venues that can handle their business um, and do it simultaneously, get all the information presented back to them in a very organized fashion. Um, as we sit here today, uh, the Benton is a two-diamond listing 
which does not create a great deal of, uh, of visibility. It's a baseline. Uh, and depending on, um, you know, the organic results, we could be on page five. Um, and if we could go to um, the next slide and then come back to this one, I would appreciate it. Um, essentially, essentially what the listing does is puts us down where this, uh, where this purple arrow is. Um, in other words, so regardless of what the organic results are, um, our visibility will be enhanced because we're paying for that visibility. And uh, the data that we see from Cvent shows that the better the visibility, the better the uh, influx of RFPs are, and then we have the opportunity to promote the facility and ultimately bid on the business and convert it. Um, it is a very, very powerful tool. And I would say to you over the last five hotels that I've worked at, at a minimum, you're, you're looking at something, uh, something north of about 80% of the hotel's business is filtered through Cvent. Again, regardless of whether it's an association group or a corporate group or a leisure group. Um, the next item is um, the uh, Speed RFP, which is a similar concept but this is really targeted at um, non-professional planners. And um, the, 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 the opportunity here is to, again, kind of make the process easy for them. Um, and it is a tool that I have some experience with that I, that I believe will help us, um, again, fill in some of the blanks. These are not massive programs like our major associations. This is stuff that we would fill in uh, some of the holes that we may have you know, one group going out and one group coming in a day later, we have a hole, we try to fill it. Um, and Speed RFP is a very, very valuable tool uh, that I believe will have great application here in Winston-Salem. Uh, the competitive market ads, um, for those of you that may have um, listened to or, or attended the TDA meeting last week, uh, the Visit Winston-Salem was talking about doing some advertising in Raleigh-Durham. We're gonna do the exact same thing um, with competitive market ads, which is again, another uh, tool that Cvent presents to us. So if there is a customer that would fit into the Benton um, that is looking in Durham, Raleigh, Durham, they will be presented an alternative to consider Winston-Salem um, as an alternative because, we, because they're, they're, what they've requested would fit in our hotel, uh, in our hotel, in our convention center. Um, and uh, again, it's something I've had some past experience with and some past success with. Um, and then the last item I wanted to leave you with is um, Visit Winston-Salem is um, uh, in the process of contracting with an organization called Miles Partnership. Um, and they are going to be reworking the Visit Winston-Salem site. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, we believe we've got some opportunity to enhance the uh, the Twin City Quarter website, and we have started discussions with Miles about doing uh, ancillary work in conjunction with the agreement that they're about to sign uh, with the city on behalf of Visit Winston-Salem um, so that we can properly position the convention center, which is the anchor of all of our group business, um, to be equally successful, equally visible, and to drive more exposure, visibility, and ultimately more business so that we can get to um, the target number of and exceed the 4.107 million. Be happy to take any questions if there's anything I haven't addressed. Um, just one question on the Cvent diamond ranking system is three diamonds the highest? Four, four diamonds is actually the highest. And if you see the four, like essentially we are search engine optimization. <laughs> it, it, so it is. I guess if just you, the question is what to prevent our competing or competing. Um, venues and other places to also make that payment and then we're still you know following in the middle of those search results 
Well, a couple of, that's a great question. If you see the four boxes at the very top of this page, starting with the W Atlanta Midtown, that is the highest listing you can buy. It's about another probably 10 or $12,000 on top of what our listing will cost. And there's only four. So they limit how many of those they will, they will sell. They also limit the three diamonds. And essentially what they do is they rotate. So, you know, one, you know, we would, we would show up on one set of returns from a search and then another hotel would search, but every other search, we're going to be where, uh, where you see us listed there. Um, and in answer to, uh, you know, competitor uh, organizations, um, there's nothing, there's nothing keeping them from, you know, pursuing competitive market ads in, in Winston-Salem or, um, you know, the Greensboro uh, MSA. Um, it's just a question of whether or not they're willing to underwrite the expense. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that the Raleigh-Durham um, um, investment will prove uh, noteworthy uh, because uh, they're not inexpensive, but at the same time, if we land, you know, one or two pieces of business, uh, we've we've essentially paid for the service, uh, and that's what Cvent relies on, making sure that we see good results because they want us to to do this again. The campaign that we're going to buy is six months, um, and then they will give us uh, a lot of metrics surrounding how many people saw it, uh, what the conversion ratio, how many leads, et cetera, et cetera, that so that we can make an informed decision as to whether or not we want to do it again. much. My pleasure. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Commission, is there any additional questions or Grant, anything else to add? No. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. Um, we will move on to the DEI um, WSF Community Engagement Meeting Recap and Survey Updates. Hey everyone, <clears throat> DJ Hargrave with the Winston Salem Fairgrounds. Um, so the survey is still rolling. It'll be out until June 30th. So there's about eight or nine more days left um, with the survey being available to the public. Um, we did offer the public input session this past Thursday at six o'clock. Um, didn't have any luck with attendance, um, but it's you know good that we provide the option for people to come out um, in case they didn't have access to the survey in person or virtually, excuse me. Um, we've had 819 responses. Um, we continue to get new responses every day. Um, we This past weekend uh, kicked off our, I guess you could call it our in-person campaign promoting the event or promoting the survey. So we had um, an A-frame and flyers out at Pride Festival on Trade Street. Um, we also had those out at the Juneteenth event that happened at Biotech, uh, Biotech Place. And then we will also have signage and flyers out this weekend on Friday for the Downtown Jazz Series. And we, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the full update. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself there. Um, does anyone have any questions pertaining to the survey? Uh, maybe a suggestion with, with, with the upcoming uh, concert this weekend at uh, with Charlie Wilson. Would you think that may be a good place for us to get some uh, testimonials or saying that, you know, we should be doing more of this? Just seeing what the people say, because we haven't really had a big name concert, uh, especially R&B. See me really, uh I'll, I'll jump to that, DJ. Billy, I think we'll we'll provide uh, access to the guests and, and uh, that comes to the show. We'll, I'll make sure DJ has that A-frame out there and those flyers so that those guests and attending not only can provide some kind of comment or feedback, but they can also provide their input. Um, so I definitely think we want to do something like that. All right. Thank you. Um, this is Vic. This this is Vicky Miller. Um, I um, I was thinking more of a grassroots uh, type of uh, method of reaching people, 
And that's because um, with certain issues, you have to get to the grassroots. For example, for African-Americans, they're thinking about even going to the barber shops, the beauty salons, or whatever. Whatever types of venues different groups use. I think we need to do that. And again, as I mentioned earlier, um, with uh, one of our items in the um, agenda, using Facebook, TikTok, did we use any of any of those two methods for the survey, for example? Uh, yeah, we we did use Facebook. It was heavily promoted through uh, uh, the city's Facebook page, and then they promoted. They, they did a sponsored, boosted post, however you want to word it. Um, and and to many, we might have talked about this in the subcommittee. To DJ's point earlier, we've also reached out to individual organizations um, of all ethnicities and backgrounds and groups to ensure that that we kind of do get really, you know, a, a part of that grassroots effort um into the communities that you know dj and i can't typically reach so we've worked with the human relations department and the dei department mm -hmm. to get down in those community networks to really help get that out along with the city's marketing department um put quite a bit of money into uh some tv and radio ads along with like you said the facebook um Facebook but what pieces. about TikTok? You mentioned Facebook. What about TikTok? Any of those things that the uh, young adults would use too is what I was thinking. Yeah, DJ, I'll, I'll, I know we've done TikTok videos. I don't know if anything. Um, and there may be other things as well. I don't know them all because I don't use them, but I'm just using TikTok as an example. DJ, have we done a TikTok post for that? Do you know? Oh, we've not done a TikTok post for that. Um, we could get a little creative there. It's it's um it's a it's a good challenge to find out how we could uh, promote the survey through TikTok, but we haven't so far. That's good. Okay. okay. Vicky, thank you. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get with the we'll we'll get that done. Thanks. That's that uh, answers my question. All right. Thank you, everyone. So we are at staff updates and we have about five minutes left in our meeting time. So city staff, if we can give a high level overview of these things, <laughs> that would be fantastic to help keep us on time here. And we'll kick it off with the Fairgrounds grandstand. Uh, well, yeah, I think we touched on it already, so I won't belabor that point. Um, we're waiting on a seating assessment. The plan is to tear off the roof and uh, uh, see what that seating assessment says. And at the end of the day, we will we have a plan to to make it work with or without the seating and with or without the roof uh, so we'll be fair ready one way or the other so that's grandstand um does that lead into fairgrounds yes uh so for fairgrounds just real quick um like billy just mentioned we have a charlie wilson show this saturday we've got about uh maybe less than 400 seats available so it's selling really good hopefully we can move all those um in the last um week here the last five days or so uh we just came off of aaron tip and sammy kershaw concert which was nearly sold out we had about 200 seats left for that show so that went really well um and then at the end of this month we've got jurassic quest returning which is always a good one for the community um usually see about 10,000 plus folks come through that so that is it for me i'll let cheryl run through anything fair i will note if, if um Ben has joined on this meeting, I think. So if we want to update him after this, just real quick, that might be a good idea for based on the truest conversation. Yeah, I'll be real quick with the fair. I'm continuing to plan, getting the grounds ready. Of course, grandstand is number one priority. Our entertainment, um, we're I'm in the process of booking clock tower. We're looking at different stage areas and focusing on some local more um, reaching into the community, getting some um, local entertainment. Other than that, um, as I get contract approvals and finalization on agreements, I'll present them. That's it Thank for you, the fair. Mm -hmm. I'll go for the Benton. Uh, we're having a great uh, fourth quarter for the year, so uh, we're rounding that up in the next uh, 
few days here. We've got a, a large group uh, coming in this weekend uh, to end the year. So uh, very pleased with how that's going. Benton South uh, is still seeing some uh, good, pretty good revenues, but we still want to get it, uh, do a lot more focus over there. Uh, and the only capital project that we're working on right now is still the doors and locks for Benton South. Um, that's a slow process due to the equipment. I'll answer any questions on the Benton. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Bowman Gray. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the season, the race season is moving right along. We are having issues with the uh, track and we've been working very closely with the contractor, the paving subcontractor, the uh, engineering firm that we used uh, to really do a, a, a diagnosis of what might be going on with the track, uh, probably do some core borings during their two week July 4th break uh, and then hopefully from that, uh, come up with a plan for how we want to make repairs or address the issue uh, after racing season, because we'll have an entire month from the end of racing until the uh, first uh, home football game, which will be homecoming for Winston Salem State. Ben, can you provide a little bit more detail of what's happening with the track? So there are areas in the track where what, what folks are referring to as pebbling, where the surface is, is uh, coming up uh, a bit. And, um, and so there have been complaints from drivers that it's getting up inside the cars and, and you know, possibly uh, damaging the vehicles. Also, if you go into turn one, there are two slight uh, kind of uh, humps in the track. And, uh, and that's also something we may look to address after the season. I think right now we're being very cautious because sometimes apparently with, with when it comes to paving and particular racetracks, the fix could be worse than the problem. And so uh, we really want to diagnose kind of what's going on. That's why we want to do the core borings is a situation where you have, uh, I guess what they call, uh, I think it's called desegregation where the, where the material is kind of pulling apart or uh, just what, you know, the, the compaction wasn't what it needed to be. Um, you know, I think we just, I think all, everybody on the team feels like we need to do this diagnosis first before we really get in there and try to do any kind of, uh, you know, major, you know, major repair work or, or replacement work. Gotcha, thank you for that elaboration. Do you also want to do uh, Truist Stadium, Ben? Sure. So um, I apologize for being late to the meeting. I was in a um, meeting with a council member this morning. Um, but basically, uh, there's an item that's going before council tonight to award a contract for design services for the MLB upgrades project for Truist Stadium. Um, Coupled with that, it's something we're going to be staff will be is going to be working on in the next couple months. Uh, the team has also asked if, uh, if if we can add to the scope of that project the construction of administration offices um, there on site. They're they're losing their current offices uh, with a, a development that's taking place across the street, and so uh, we're, we're going to be working through probably a separate lease agreement with them so that they will pay for. Uh, the construction of the administration offices, and that will not be part of the $5 million that the council is uh, considering tonight for approval for the MLB upgrades. So, uh, so the plan is to, to hopefully see that contract awarded to, not tonight, have the, con the architect start work on that, and then probably in July, uh, city staff are going to advertise for what's called pre-construction services, which is basically starting the process of securing a construction manager at risk, uh, who would be our contractor, who'd work very closely with our architect during, uh, during the design phase of the project. Could go through that process in August, uh, hopefully bring something to council in August or September to uh, award a contract to them. But the whole benefit 
of, of construction manager at risk is to basically bring the architect and the contractor together early in the design process so that the design uh, can be done and keep us within a certain budget. Uh, it also enables us to be able to do a project like this where most likely we're going to be doing the work while the stadium is still operating, while we'll still have events and possibly games there. So that's what's coming in the, in the foreseeable future. All right, thank you for those update bins. Commission members, is there anything further, any further questions? All right, hearing none, it looks like from our agenda that our next meeting is gonna be July 18th um, at noon. And so we'll keep you posted on whether we are looking at that as a virtual meeting or an in-person meeting. And um, with that, if there are no further questions, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.